Hello, everybody. How's it going today? So today is day three of the Crochet Business Summit. And uh, I wanted to come on and do another little recap video for today. So I'm so glad to have you joining me. I hope you guys are all doing good. Let me know if you guys are um, joining in on the Crochet Business Summit this week. Um, if you were able to catch any of the videos today, any of the presentations. Um, I got to do my presentation today, which was really fun. Um, and I got to do my Q&A session afterwards, so that was really nice as well. Um, I don't have as many notes today. I will admit my focus <laughs> has waned as the week has gone on. I definitely struggle with uh, maintaining focus for that long um, and just sitting for that long, you know, having to sit through the presentations. But that is why Pam does offer, you know, you can buy the all access pass so that you have the videos forever and you can watch them whenever you want to. Um, or you can do the power pack where you get access to a lot more stuff. Um, had a few people who said they liked my presentation today. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate that you guys are here. Um, hello, Erica, the lopsided crafter. Um, I'm so glad you enjoyed the presentation and yarn ballet. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them now. This is the time. This is just my kind of recap time. Um, hello from Brazil. Hello, hello. I see Sindra is here. So, um, I did watch, let's see. So today's classes, I wrote them down. So, um, if you guys wanted, you, you can rewatch the classes, um, for free until tomorrow night. So tomorrow at like 10 p.m. Mountain Time is when the, um, let's see, oh, let me see if I'm live again. It said video paused. I think I'm going to get closer to the house just in case because I'm on Wi-Fi. So let's see. Can you guys hear me and see me now? Let me know because it said it paused. I want to make sure you guys can still hear and see me. I'm going to come up here on the porch. see my video paused but I think I'm back on okay thanks Sindra I am live again I'm gonna come closer to the house <laughs> is that okay now you're invading my space oh well I can go back over here no, it's okay. I'll let you invade my space you can have the one space oh I can invade your space yeah. that's the captain yeah, are you in. still working probably not I'll probably kick you out because I'm gonna be using a saw ah yeah don't use a saw right now well, that's why I said you can't come over here in my space and tell me what not to be using. So, but I'm not using it, so you can continue. Well, exactly. You need to take a break. Yeah, sure. Drink you some water. Drink your juice. All right. Drink your juice. Drink your Hello, juice. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> if this is your first time watching my live, this is totally normal. I tend to not completely stay on track very well. That's why my lives end up being so long. But I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. We've got like 15 people on right now. Hello, hello. It's the surprise from the captain, that's why. It's yes! A surprise. surprise from the it's captain! Like, who's going to come by and sit on the couch today? And by the way, the captain is Captain Hook, a.k.a. Captain Hook, a.k.a. my husband. <laughs> so if you're, if you're new to following me, that is who that is. And we work together and, and are together 24-7, so. Yay! Okay, so the classes that you could have attended today or can still, like I said, you can watch them through, to, through tomorrow for free. Um, there was a session about pattern writing. So there were, uh, I think it was 10 tips on writing better patterns. And I want to tell you guys, I do have a pattern writer's handbook. It's 40 pages long. Some of them are notes pages. So it's like 35 pages of good, solid content. Um, that walks you through the process. So if you've thought about designing patterns, you have no idea where to start, maybe you've written down some notes or whatever, I have that handbook. That is a digital download. You can find it in my Etsy shop. It's like $15. Um, but that is everything you need to know about pattern writing. So be sure to check that out. If you're interested, you can read about it in the description if you're, if you're wanting to know what everything that it covers. 
um, but it walks through that. And I did get to listen to that presentation today. I actually turned it on in the car and listened to it as like kind of podcast style while I was coming back from the chiropractor today. Um, and everything that she said is stuff that I included in my workbook. So I feel like the workbook is solid because uh, the lady who did that presentation has been doing this for a really long time um, and is definitely an expert. So that made me feel really good about my workbook. Um, but check that out. She gave some really, really good tips. Um, the next one I did not watch because I wasn't personally is interested. Um, it was all about how to become a virtual assistant. So another potential stream of income for you. So if you're looking to like run a crochet business and you want some additional info, um, or some additional, uh, income, you could potentially do some kind of virtual assistant work for someone else who possibly is running a crochet business. So things, and she did talk, I, I think I listened in on like a little bit of it. She talked about things like, um, creating Canva graphics for people, scheduling things for people, running social media for people, like all these other things, the aspects of people's business that they don't really enjoy and they would rather be spending their time doing something else. So um, I do a little bit of that. I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions and I do offer social media management for people, which is something that I haven't done. I don't have a regular client right now, but for about a year, I had a very regular client uh, that I worked with every single month to plan out her social media um, and help her create graphics, which was really fun. Um, it worked out really well for us. We worked really well together, so that was fantastic. And she just got billed each month after our session for that month. Um, okay, so I did miss a comment while I was messing with him. Uh, let's see. Oh, everybody said they can hear me. And then somebody asked about website. Oh, so Carla, um, or Clara, sorry, Clara, right? My Sweet DIY. I know a Carla and I know a Clara. I was going to send you a message. You really opened my eyes and helped me deciding what I need to do to start full-time doing this. I'm so glad, because that was my point of my presentation today were my biggest takeaways of how we got here. So the main things that allowed me to to be more confident in making that decision to move full time because it's a scary decision it really is but i think part of me my husband is the type of person who's like you you always have the ability to make a choice to do something different and so for instance we knew that if this didn't work with us going full time we would just go get another job you know what i mean so that was kind of that okay it's fine if it doesn't work it doesn't work but right now it seems to be working so it's great um Okay, what else do we have? I'm gonna go through these comments before I jump in, get, before I keep going further. Um, which hosting do you suggest? So I went through SiteGround. So my website hosting is through SiteGround and I used the WordPress through SiteGround. So my, I have a WordPress website hosted through SiteGround. Yes, and I started that right after the summit last year. So uh, I actually have to re-up my hosting fee for the year in a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Thank you for this info. I'm so glad it was helpful. Good to know I've, I've been watching some of the presentation. Uh, okay. Let's see. I was behind on the comments. So I'm just scrolling through to make sure I haven't missed anything else. Okay. So if you're just joining in, I am talking about day three of the Crochet Business Summit. Some of um, my feedback on it, like I said, it did not watch all of the presentations today. So, um, but like I said, presentation number two was how to become a virtual assistant. And that really is just an opportunity for you to make additional income helping other people with their businesses. Um, so you can go back and watch that one if you want to. Uh, the third one was on how to become a tech editor. Same thing. I'm not really interested in being a tech editor. Um, I could probably use a tech editor at some point, but um, I did not watch any of that presentation. So check that out if you're interested in learning more about what tech editing is, which I do include in my workbook. My pattern hand, my pattern writer's handbook does include information on what a tech editor does and, and whether or not you need one as a pattern designer. Um, but it does not include how to become one. So if you're interested in that, be sure to watch that. 
Uh, the fourth one was all about bookkeeping and finance. So that would be a really good one if you are not sure where to start with uh, the financing side of your business. I didn't watch that one either, um, but that would dive in because that was actually part of my presentation was making sure that before you go full time, that you have a good handle on your personal finances, because if you don't, it's going to be difficult for you to transition into handling business finances and personal finances. So getting a handle on those personal finances first, and then once you have your business, it's gonna be less stressful because you're already used to, you know, doing a month to month expense report for personal use. So the bookkeeping one was good, is, is a good one for you to watch. If you're interested, I would go check that out. And again, these classes are available for free until tomorrow night. You can still use the link in my bio. So if you're joining this the first time you've heard of the Crochet Business Summit and these classes, check out the link in my bio. You can get your free ticket and you can watch these classes until tomorrow. You can go check them out. Um, the fifth. So I think actually, I think my, I think my presentation was the third one, maybe, and then bookkeeping was maybe the fourth or the fifth. And then the fifth one was Maker Mindset with Pam Grice, who is the person who put this whole thing together. So I did watch a little bit of that one. Um, and it was all, so I, I, I did enjoy that one because I feel like Pam's presentations are very, um, motivating and uplifting and it's very emotionally, um, motivating, emotionally motivating, um, especially for people who are continuing to try to grow their business. I'm going to move this too because I feel like I'm not in the sun. That's a little bit better. My face was really dark. Okay. So the notes that I took from Pam, uh, all about the maker mindset was, it was really about how as creatives, sometimes we tend to see our creative tendencies and our innovative thoughts and our creative thoughts as a negative when we shouldn't. We should be harnessing those creative thoughts and seeing them as a positive and as like a superpower. So, and I agree with that. I think that innovation is what's going to keep you from feeling burnout. It's going to keep you from getting tired of what you're doing because you're not going to be doing the same thing over and over again if you're willing to be creative and innovate. Um, she talked about how creativity allows you to ask better questions. So like creativity and curiosity. Um, Kathy says, Pam brought me to tears because she spoke to who I was and I didn't know that was what it meant to be creative. Exactly. Exactly. So I think the big thing was the curiosity side. So allowing yourself to be curious and ask questions, because when you start asking questions, you start thinking of your own solutions to problems you wouldn't even have even thought of, which then allows you to be creative because you're like, I'm going to solve that problem. Or I'm going to create a better solution because I'm asking those questions. I see what the issue is. Um, so, yes, I think because she really, really hammered home the idea of curiosity as being a part of the creative process. Um, so, let's see. Creative traits are a superpower, not a negative trait. I was writing, so these are my notes. I'm reading off of my notes. Um, the willingness to innovate and change allows you to stay relevant and profitable. So if you just keep doing the same thing over and over again for years, there is a possibility that not only will you burn out, but you'll become irrelevant because you're not keeping up with the trends. You're not keeping up with what's happening and what your, your audience is asking for. Um, now that doesn't mean to do things that you hate just because they're trendy. Um, that's important as well, but it's coming up with new ideas that fit in with your business and are things that your audience would be looking for and that your followers want. And sometimes that's just listening to your followers. So listening to what they say and what they're interested in. And even if their exact idea isn't what you want to do, again, curiosity and innovation, you can take that idea and say, I may not do this, but I could do this. And this is something that I might actually want to do. So I think that's really important. Um, if we are doing something that doesn't look like everyone else's work, and some, sometimes this can cause us to feel like we aren't doing something right. So she showed this little graphic, which was really cool. And it was this line of kids and a teacher. And the teacher had given them like some blocks of wood or whatever. And all of these kids standing in the line. I'm sorry, there's a crow flying back and forth. You hear the crow. Um, they had built these big, tall towers. All of them had built their towers exactly alike. They were super proud of themselves. You could see it on their faces. They were standing up with their hands on their hips, all happy. And then there was this one kid in the line who had built this big, crazy castle. 
And so there's all these kids standing in a line with their straight, tall towers of wood. And there's this one kid who built the castle. And he actually looks kind of sad or upset. And it's because he's looking at all these kids who are so proud of their tall towers thinking, did I do something wrong? Because I didn't build what these other kids built. And I thought it was really cool that Pam showed that graphic because I was like, that's true. Sometimes when we're doing something different and we're thinking outside the box, but we're still comparing ourselves to other people, it's easy for us to think, well, am I doing something wrong? Because my stuff doesn't look like theirs. <laughs> Um, and it's true. I think I felt that a little bit um, when I decided that I only wanted to work with super bulky yarn, even in the summer. Um, and I'm putting out these designs that that maybe look a little different and maybe have a, you know, putting things out that I'm like, I don't know if people are even going to like this because it's not like what's out there for, you know, summer crochet is usually light and airy and lacy and thin weight yarn. And I was like, I don't want to use that. <laughs> So I'm putting out these super chunky items in the middle of summer um, that are still summer designs, but they're very different from what's out there. And I'm like, are people even going to like this? Because this isn't normal. And so we have to put that away and say, no, I'm enjoying it. My followers are enjoying it. I like what I'm doing. So I'm going to be proud of it and see that as, as, a, um, as a good thing, not a negative. Okay, I have, I think, two more pages, three more pages of notes from her. See, like, all of these wonderful notes. So even the idea of a starving artist, so the fact that that is a term, it really hammers home that a lot of times we don't see artists as being able to make a living, that they're not professional enough to have a profitable existence and support themselves, which most of us who work in the creative arts know that's not true. Most of us know people who maybe work in ceramics or work in jewelry who have a very profitable business for themselves. And I think there is a generation of people who are really working to change that so that that's not really even a thing. Um, but I think that was important that she brought it up, that there is that idea out there that if you're trying to make a living with a creative business, that it's not going to be possible or it's not going to be profitable enough for you to make it happen on your own and for you to support yourself, which is not true. Uh, let's see. So you need to, this is according to Pam, you need to develop your creative traits. And these include curiosity, risk-taking, being willing to take risks, um, being open to new things, and then all of those then leading to you um, developing your ability to be innovative. And Kathy says, or that artists are crazy or messy, being a negative connotation. Exactly. Um, I do think that there are, are, in some ways, there are parts of our personalities, at least many of the creatives that I've met, who we do kind of struggle with that professionalism norm of like answering emails right away, being on time for everything, meeting deadlines. Some of us are really good at it, but some of us are not. Um, and it's figuring out the things that you want to work on, but that idea of generally an artist or a creative person being unprofessional or unable to, like I said, have a professional, profitable career. Um, so yes, that definitely hits home, I think, for a lot of people. Um, so she also talked a lot about the innate character traits, um, of the character traits of innate creatives um, and how much of a roller coaster it can be. Um, so for instance, a lot of us can be both extroverted and introverted, and it depends on the situation that you're in. So I know I feel that for sure. Um, when I'm in, in my moment, like when I'm on a live now, I feel very extroverted. I feel like I'm talking directly to you guys. I feel like I connect with you. I love getting comments so that I can interact. Um, I actually struggle a lot with the pre-recorded videos, like talking to no one. It's very difficult for me. Um, when I go to craft shows, I'm very extroverted because I feel like I'm around my people. I feel like I'm around people who want to see my work and are excited about other people's work and, you know, being at the craft shows. Um, but there are other events. If I go to something where I feel out of place, I can kind of become isolated and not be as talkative and be kind of shy and just wanting to sit by myself um, and not say anything. So it's interesting that there's such a dichotomy 
um, of different, the personality traits, you know, it's almost like you have two different personality traits in the same body. Um, she talks about that a lot, and this is available on YouTube. So if you are, again, doing the summit, be sure to watch this one. It's, it was very, very interesting and very motivating. Um, so she talked about how creativity does require nurturing. And you nurture it with patience, intention, and practice. And this was interesting because I have always been the first one to say that I can't draw. So when I was in art class in high school, I had a best friend who I was always comparing my art to hers. I said that I was not as talented as her. I wasn't as creative as her. Um, I couldn't draw like she did, like freehanding things. You know, there were other things I was good at, but um, that stuck with me for the rest of my life. And I was like, oh, I can't draw like that. I'm not any good at that. Um, and it was really my husband when he bought his iPad and we got Procreate and I started drawing and designing. So like this is one of my designs um, and telling me like you can't keep saying that you suck at that. You just have to practice, you know. Um, and so it's taken a lot of practice, but it is. It's sitting down and intentionally setting time to practice. Um, and now it's sometimes I still say that I'm not very good at drawing because I think that that mental mindset sticks with us and it just becomes something that we say. Um, but I know that I'm not bad at drawing, you know, I mean, I can always get better and I can practice, but I'm not bad at it. Um, obviously, I mean, I have so many people who see my work and love it and are excited to, to purchase t-shirts and, and all of that stuff. Um, Sindra said, your art is awesome. I am wearing some now. Yay. Thank you. So yes, but it took practice. It, it, you know, this was not the first design that I came up with. The first design I came up with literally just said, I'd rather be crocheting and had a little clip art crochet hook, you know? So it took a lot of time and practice and effort and putting in the, the practice hours of sitting there at night instead of crocheting, I was drawing on the iPad and practicing. Um, and having patience with yourself because you know it's not going to be perfect the first time around and picking yourself up and, and trying again and continuing to work towards it because you know that you want to do it and you're enjoying it. Um, let's see. So that was kind of where my mind went during that presentation. Um, and the same thing with my design process. You know, I mean, as a designer, um, I feel like my newest jacket that's going to be releasing in July, it's the Angelica jacket with the zipper. Um, you can see it on my feed and some of the newest posts. And that design really felt like a milestone for me because it really was something that I put out there because I really love it. And I wasn't sure when I put it out there if other people were going to even like it because it is a very different shape. Um, it's a very different style than what I've seen out there. It's using a yarn that's not meant for making wearables. Um, but I love it. And I think that's what's important. Like, even if the pattern tanks, even if I get four people who buy that pattern, it felt like an accomplishment for me to stick with it because I really like it. I want it out there in the world. And so... I'm going to do it and I'm going to publish the pattern. <laughs> so it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling um, when you say, you know, I'm going to do it because because I want to do it, because I love it. Um, hello from Chile. I see Kayla is here too. Kayla, I mentioned you in my presentation today. So I hope some new people come and find you. Um, I was talking about, uh, it was the part of my presentation where I was talking about finding your niche and you are on my list of people that are rocking their niche because you are, you have a fabulous, fabulous business. So go check her out. Amazing. Okay. So what's next? Curiosity makes you question things and it allows you to think creatively. So again, Pam was going into how you could question anything like you she picked up her mouse her computer mouse and was like I could ask five questions about this computer mouse so it's allowing yourself to ask questions um, and then find the answers think of solutions all of that so thinking creatively and asking questions curiosity must come without judgment stop judging the things that make you wonder and ask questions judgment will shut down curiosity 
The next point was that risk, you want to take risks despite fear. She actually talked about this a little bit in her presentation on Monday, I believe. It's either Monday or Tuesday. Um, we all have fear. Again, going back to my latest pattern, a fear that people aren't going to like it. They're going to think it's silly looking. They're going to think that why would I, why would I make a pattern like that? because I want to. I wanted to see what it would turn out like. I wanted to see if it would work. I wanted to see if I could make um, a clothing item with t-shirt yarn. I wanted the challenge. I was curious, you know? Um, and so being afraid to move forward, even if you have those fears, because that's what's going to allow you to grow. It's what's going to allow you to learn. It's what's going to allow you to make mistakes and then come up with a better solution. And there's your creativity. Let's see, you have to choose to move forward despite the fear. So that's what, again, just reading my notes. Openness without editing. Don't shut down your new ideas, especially if you a new idea pops in your head and you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. Explore it. Explore that idea first before you shut yourself down. Edit them later. So once you've had time to go through and get all of your information, like get it out on paper. If you have an idea, write it out. What, what, how would this work? What would I do? Um, and then once you get all of that information out, then you can go back and say, okay, nah, I don't know if that would work. I don't know if this would work. Um, but allow yourself to explore the new ideas without editing them immediately. Allow yourself to receive new ideas too, you know, be open to it. Okay. Innovation and energy. Innovation brings energy and provides momentum to the creative you and the creation. Your business needs you to be innovative. Make sure that you are allowing creativity to be your superpower. And then she went through some ways to nurture a creative mindset. And this is interesting because I remember watching a video by Jim Quick. Jim Quick is um, someone who excels in brain training. So like speed reading, um, faster learning and processing and things like that. He actually had a brain injury as a child. And there were people who said, you know, there's no way that you're going to be able to do what these other people are doing. And he's like, no, I'm going to do it better. Um, so fantastic channel to follow if you like that kind of stuff. But I remember him talking about how um, creativity is like any other muscle in your body. You just have to, you're, you're not going to run out of it. You just have to practice and you have to work out those muscles. So you have to create time to practice being creative. Um, and that is going to allow you to have an unending well of creativity that you can pull from. And that's what that reminded me of when Pam started talking about these ways to nurture a creative mindset. The first one is to try new things. So always be trying new things. I think for me as a crocheter that is trying out new types of yarn um, to allow the yarn to kind of pave the way of like, what should I do with this once I have it and I start playing around with it and making swatches and seeing what it feels like. Um, sometimes that can actually be the catalyst to create a new design. Um, and then obviously getting procreate and drawing again. That was the first time I had started drawing in a really long time. Um, so allowing myself to do that, even if, um, even if I was worried that I wouldn't be any good at it. Um, I got the question from Ellen. Um, and you guys, you can put your questions in the little question box down on the bottom right. You can click on that little uh, speech bubble with the question mark in it. And you can, if you wanna ask a question. Um, and Ellen asked where slash how do you store your ideas Let's see if I can click on it there we go um, okay so for me I actually have a little app in my phone called keep it's called keep notes and it's by Google so if you have a Samsung that's it would be in I think it just comes on your phone or you can get it from the App Store but you can also um, access it from your desktop so I keep a lot of ideas and brainstorming notes and things in my Keep app because then I can go to my desktop and I can pull them up. Um, that's also where I keep notes for my patterns. Um, I also have journals. So like this one, this is one of my journals. Um, but the problem is I have to go back and read them and it gets all jumbled up with other things. And so a lot of times I will forget where I wrote things down. So using the app is usually the best way for me to do that, to write down ideas. I actually also have a gallery on my phone uh, in my pictures. So, and you know, I think most phones allow you to make 
galleries in your native photo keeper. And I have one that's called brainstorming and I'll take screenshots of things. I'll download pictures, I'll take screenshots of things and I'll save them to my brainstorming gallery. Um, I also use the Instagram boards. So where you can save, it's kind of like Pinterest, but it's on Instagram, so you can save it to collections. Um, I have a brainstorming collection. I also use that for things like our mystery boxes when I find a really cool product that would be cool in a mystery box, or if I find a pattern on Instagram that I want to include in one of my roundups, or if I find someone that would be really fun to um, interview for Pink Sheep and Friends, I'll save to my Instagram boards. So that's super helpful. So those are three main ways. That I, that I maintain my ideas. So thanks for the question, Ellen. That was a good one. Uh, okay. All right, so trying new things, uh, reflecting. I did not listen to that part, so I think that would just be like meditation time, reflection time. Yes, yeah, so keep is not just for my patterns. I use it for a lot of things because you literally have little post-it notes. Um, okay, so getting enough sleep. That's been better for me lately. Um, sometimes it can be difficult, uh, but it's really, I, that was another thing that I read, having a nighttime routine, um, whether that's journaling or reading or something and not being on your phone right before bed can be very, very helpful. So maybe like 20 to 30 minutes before you actually close your eyes to go to sleep, not being on your phone. So taking that time to do something else before you actually go to bed can be extremely helpful. And if you try that, let me know if it works for you because it definitely seems to work for me. Um, usually I'll take some time to read before bed. And actually I've not been doing that the last couple of weeks. So I need to get back into that habit because it helps me sleep. And I'm working my way through Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm on the last book in the series. So need to finish that. Okay, um, this was interesting. Uh, this is kind of on the same level as the nighttime routine as having a morning routine. Um, it's called Morning Pages. It was from a book that Pam read, but it is writing for 30 minutes every morning in a journal and not editing yourself. So getting yourself a journal and as soon as you wake up in the morning, spend some time writing in your journal. 30 minutes would be a lot for me in the morning, but I think even if you did like 10 to 15 minutes of just writing in your journal, um, can be very helpful. So having a morning routine and having a nighttime routine, I think are very helpful to helping you get enough sleep and helping you start the day off right and feeling like you can be creative. I think we had another question. Um, my sweet DIY talking about your handbook for writing patterns. How long did it take to write your first pattern? Okay. I am going to answer that after I get through this. Um, so that I don't keep popping up here cause I'm almost through my notes and then I will definitely talk about that real quick. Um, okay, there's four more things. Uh, there's get outside. Um, so I need to do that more because my husband's outside all the time. <laughs> um, but usually during the day, so like this week, because I've been sitting in front of the computer watching these videos, um, I've been trying to take breaks to have lunch and come outside and walk the dog, um, spend some time in the garden and just being out in nature, uh, is really great for us as humans. So that was one of her points. And then um, she said joining a mastermind, so like a small group of people who are kind of at the same level you are as designers or creators and having brainstorming sessions can be really good for creativity because you're sharing ideas. Um, reading, talked about that before bed, but reading, and that can be anything, that can be personal reading, that can be business reading, whatever helps you. Um, and then play, that was her last, her last note for creativity is taking time to play, 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 play. Um, okay, so the question that I got from my sweet DIY, I'm going to pop this up here so you guys can see it. Um, I honestly don't know how long it took me to write my first pattern. So I released my Rachel crop top pattern in, I think I said it was 2018. Um, and the way that I did that was I was making those crop tops for craft shows. Um, so I had already made the crop top in multiple sizes. I knew it by heart. So I knew the pattern by heart. I would just make it from my head. Um, and so it was a little easier to write the pattern up and I wrote it 
as I went along. So I was creating one as I wrote the pattern down. Um, I did get it pattern tested. Um, so I don't really know. And it, because it, it, right now, usually now it takes, it probably took me longer to create new patterns than to write up the Rachel crop top because like I said, it was already in my head. So I just had to sit down and write it down and get it tested. Whereas if I'm starting from scratch and I'm designing a new pattern, it's going to take me longer because I'm having to work through the pattern as I go. Sometimes I have to frog it back all the way if it's not working out the way that I thought it would. Um, so there have been times where I've had to frog a project back three or four times because it's just not looking so hot. Um, and so it can take me a month or two to write a new pattern and, and get it through that process and maybe another month to get it tested. Um, sometimes less. I mean, there are patterns that I've written up and gotten tested within the span of like a month and then been able to release them, especially smaller ones that don't have a lot of different sizes. Um, but it really depends. And like I said, I'm not really sure. The first one, I'm not sure how long it took me, but um, it really depends on the pattern. Let's see. Okay. You guys have any more questions? Let me know if you had a favorite presentation from today. Um, and if you have any action steps for yourself, if there's things that you're already doing because of the summit, um, I know for me, there were a couple of things right after the summit that I did last year. And that was, you know, starting my own website, purchasing my domain name. Um, that was a big action step that I took immediately. So that was good. How are those bugs treating you? Nibbles. Huh? Nibbles. Nibbles. Yeah. I don't think I'm getting nibbled. I think uh, I think I have enough bug spray on. Yeah, no. <laughs> you are so welcome. I'm so glad that was helpful. Okay. So, tomorrow is the last day of classes, I believe. I don't think there's any classes on Friday. If you have bought, like, the Power Pack, I think there are some collaborative sessions that you can go to on Friday. Um, I think there might be an implementation day thing, maybe. Um, but tomorrow's the last day of full classes. Um, I am going to try and attend some of them. I feel like there's a hair on me somewhere. There it is. Uh, I'm going to try to attend some of them. Uh, Ellen says, getting an accountability buddy. I need to have communication with my, and have good communication with my CPA. Yes, that's important. Um... So yes, I'm going to take some of the classes tomorrow, um, and I do plan on checking in again with you guys in the afternoon. So same time, sometime between like 4 and 5 o'clock Central Time is when I've been going live to kind of do my review and my check-in. Um, and I do need to check the time on Friday for the implementation day stuff, um, because I may still do my 12 o'clock live on Friday. I'm not 100% sure. Um, we'll have to see if I do, I'm going to check it today. So if I do decide to do my 12 PM live, I am going to schedule it here on Instagram. So you'll actually see it on my profile page that I'm going to go live on Friday, but it'll probably just be me. Um, I'm not sure what I'll talk about yet. I may talk about my presentation and we can go dive in a little bit deeper on finding your niche. Um, because that seems to be very interesting for everybody. I do have a YouTube video about that. So you guys can check out my YouTube channel if you want to um, learn a little bit more about that. Um, and I think that's everything. It's been a long week already. So if you guys have been watching the, uh, the presentations, I think you know where I'm coming from. Thanks, Ellen. You're always here to support, Ellen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, I think that's everything, you guys. I don't see any more questions, so I am going to go get some work done. Or maybe not. Maybe just go... Cook dinner. Yeah, cook dinner and relax. <sighs> All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in. Um, this video will remain on Instagram, so you can rewatch it. If you're joining late, you can check it out and, and rewatch it when you want to. And I will also upload it to YouTube. So if that is somewhere that you would prefer to watch it, you can watch it on there. It'll probably be up in the next hour or two. Um, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Happy hooking.